Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. I'm surprised it's taken so long to actually have a look at this, but uh, for those that don't know, this is a, a Nikon FM. And this camera was introduced in 1977 and sort of marked the launch of what we would call the AI um, coupling system. Previously on the earlier Nikons, and this one was predated by the FT series, um, the meter coupling to tell the camera body what the aperture was selected um, relied on the rabbit's ears which is this coupling here I've got an early pre-AI lens there is an actual whole video about these lenses but you can see on this one the rabbit's ears are solid this is a, a pre-AI lens that's been AI converted been butchered but you can see on this one Although the, the lens still has the rabbit's ears, it doesn't use them to communicate with the camera body. Let's take that. There's a, a filter on there as well. And you can also see that it's got these cutouts in it, and that enables more light to come through. Nikon lenses, it's on this side of the camera body, that's the left hand side as you look from the back. And they turn the opposite way to the Canon lenses. They turn clockwise to unmount. So you'll notice on here, it has this uh, this coupling here, and this is how it communicates the selected aperture back to the camera. You can see on here, there's a little tab there, and as you select the aperture, it, it moves. And there's a second set of numbers. On the bottom, I'll put that around that way, it'll focus. And this is what you see in the viewfinder, it's an optical system. Hence the reason why there's the holes in the rabbit's ears to try and get a bit more illumination in there. Let's have a look at the actual camera itself. It's a really beautiful camera. I don't know if you could call a camera handsome, but I think this is uh, definitely a bit of a stunning looking camera. And this was sort of in response to things like the Pentax ME and the Olympus OMs, etc. Slightly smaller, lighter, still metal, still a mechanical camera. Its uh, internals are pretty similar to the previous uh, FT series of cameras. It's just a bit of a restyle, really. So as you've seen, this is the, the locking pin for the lens. Uh, you have a PC connection here for external flash via a cable, studio flash, etc. Lug strap, lug strap, self timer on this side. So set the self timer, push down on there. I'm pretty sure you. you oh, shows how long it is. I'll use one of these. Oh, it's locked, isn't it? That's why. Nope, it's not locked. This one has a bit of a bit of an issue. So the mirror goes up. You can see the shutter still closed, and then the shutter fires and the mirror drops back down. So it doesn't particularly need a mirror lock up because if you use a self timer, that acts as your your mirror up. Show you that again. Yeah, this camera has a bit of a bit of an issue on the bottom that bit doesn't turn fully around there's no effort needed to turn it you can see there we've got a metal uh, vertical shutter I can't remember if these are titanium I think the later ones were there you go this depth of field preview you can see the little lever there moving and that stops down the uh, the iris in the lens on the top very simple standard kind of layout turn the metering on just pull this out nice and simple no separate button required that winds the film on as you can see this one has a bit of a winding issue if i just turn this i've got a dry a winder on there that would probably solve that problem i to worry about it self-resetting frame counter open the back and it resets um, threaded uh, cable release uh, for the shutter it does have a lock on it, so uh, you can lock it. Um, stop it from firing the shutter accidentally. Shutter speed selector and ASA selector, ISO selector. Shutter speeds, thousandth is the top, which is not particularly that great, but it's enough. 
all the way down to one second plus a B setting and to set the uh, ASA ISO lift and turn this dial and then just allow it to drop back down until it's locked into place this is rather handsome I think this sort of fake kind of leatherette finish on the top here hot shoe hot shoe because it's got flash contact film plane indicator useful for ma macro photography film rewind crank so you rewind your film back into the uh, container here this pulls up and that opens the back there is a lock on that there should be a lock on that yeah, there is. again like i say exercise your cameras yeah you shouldn't be able to open that until you've uh, you slid this so semi-professional features really interesting thing about this camera is it has a multiple exposure lever so you can take one picture but you don't want to move the film on but you want to recock the shutter this little lever here it just slides over and then when you cock it it doesn't wind the film on you don't have to do this with every one of these cameras it's just this one's got a bit of an issue it's another one we need to get get inside of and then you can buy the shutter again so yeah multiple exposure they went through a sort of phase of being a thing, multiple exposures really. Creative. Uh, film reminder tab at the back. This has got uh, an XP2 Super 400 black and white film. It's a C41 process black and white film. Which is interesting. Open up the back. Holds the film cassette in place. You can see the, uh, the pressure plate just keeps the film flat. This needs a bit of a bit of a clean out inside and again you can see the shutter there vertical traveling so i'd expect flash sync speed to be 125th what's highlighted in red on the top there film plane so this is where your film runs across and this is where your film container is going to sit film containers look like that it's good one. it's actually got some film coming out of it there we go, this is another rather than the old Fuji. So this is what 35mm film looks like. This is a 35mm single lens reflex. Single lens because it's got one lens. Reflex because it's got a mirror inside that reflects it up through this pentaprism. This is where you look through. You can see it's quite a nice big, big screen and it has, does have a split image um, focusing tool in the middle there as well as a very fine micro prism finish to aid in focusing they are really nice cameras i got admit the one i used most was the uh, its sister camera the f or brother camera the uh, the fe which is this is a mechanical camera it has no automatic metering at all you have to set the shutter speed and the aperture um, the fe was an aperture priority camera and we will be covering that as well so you drop your film container into this side like so if you've seen any of my videos you will uh, have seen me mess this up hundreds of times pull out a bit of the leader this is called the leader this part here multi-slotted take-up spool zoom you in Oop, put you back out again there so this goes into the slotted take-up spool there will be a slot in there this will be fun with this camera Got to mess about with this bit on the bottom. Should have put a wind on it, really. There you go, and you can see that the film has been snagged. It's lined up on the sprockets quite nicely. What I like to do to make sure that I know the film's going through the camera is just to take the slack out of it. Then we can close the back. We can zoom you back out again. That just folds away. Wind on. Again. Twist the little button on the bottom. And then you can see that this is turning so the film is being advanced through the camera. And again. You wind that until you get the frame counter back to zero. You can see S will start and zero one etc 
Now talking of lenses, Nikon lenses are a little bit, uh, can be a little bit confusing. You have pre-AI lenses. Now these are all, this is a manual focus lens. This is pre-77. This will fit because this one, somebody has butchered it with a Dremel and has put the marking on it so that it couples. It's what's called an AI converted lens. If it's not been AI converted, this kind of lens is stopped down metering only. Oh, sorry, just knocked the camera on. AI, as you've seen, manual focus lens again, but this comes with the, uh, the aperture tab, the automatic indexing. Now, if we move into something a little bit more modern, oh, this is a AF nickel. This is an 18 to 35, and this is a D series lens. The D is irrelevant here, it could just be a normal AF nickel. The D is distance information. Again, F mount. These are F mount Nikon cameras. But this one still has an aperture ring, and it also has an AI coupling. So even though this is an autofocus lens, and you can see that it has electronic contacts on the top, this will work and fit fine on here and uh, it will couple to the meter and it will work just fine obviously it won't work as an autofocus lens but it will work fine as a, as, a, as a manual focus lens and it will give you the metering as well you can see on the Nikon's unlike Canon which went all electronic with the EF mount Nikon's retained the uh, the iris, the aperture pin, the bit that makes the aperture fire, which is this part here. So that's an extreme wide angle, that's an AFD lens. This one, this is a, oh, what's this one? This is just an AF nickel, this is an 80 to 200, 2.8. Again, an autofocus lens, just look at that. Um, but again, this has the, um, the AI connection on the back, it has an aperture ring. So lenses with aperture rings will work on these cameras. Um, the G series are the ones that don't work on them because they don't have an aperture ring. And these are mechanical cameras, so they've got no way of, um, of setting the, uh, the aperture value on the lens. So you have to be a little bit careful with your head around what lenses are compatible with what camera bodies with Nikon. It's not quite as straightforward as it is with Canon, for example. As I said, mechanical camera, there is a battery in the bottom. We haven't covered the bottom, have we? No. There is um, two SR44s or LR44s in here. Only power the meter. Connections for a winder, not a motor drive, just a winder on this. Um, and this is the, the drive for that, the bit that I've been playing with. Tripod mount, kind of in the middle of the lens, and the push to rewind the film, so when you're finished, push this up to enable the film to be rewound. Yeah, very nice, very solid cameras, replaced by the um, the FM2, and I think it was an FM2A, and uh, FM3, I think it was as well. There was a whole variety of them that came afterwards, so hugely popular camera probably very profitable with Nikon, semi-professional I think. If we don't need the inter interchangeable prism or the motor drive of the F series then uh, this is a pretty good uh, good alternative because as we all know the important part with cameras is the glass and Nikon glass is amongst some of the best that there ever was. This older glass, I don't mean the new stuff from today, the, the proper metal and glass not plastic elements etc so there we have it folks oh, I'm going to take that film out anyway. you get to the end push up this button and on this camera it actually stays in and then rewind the film you heard it pop out open the back up and there's your film ready to take out like I said I leave my leader out and when I've exposed the film I always carry a little pair of scissors, I just cut this leader off, so if I've got a square end I know that that film's already been exposed. 
there's the loading and unloading of. Highly recommended. Um, let's say this one does have a bit of an issue. You know, that isn't turning the whole way. There's no, no effort required. I'm not actually turning anything very much when I'm doing that. Not the quietest of cameras. Um, this is, let's say, 125th. But, yeah, quality feel. Don't forget, this is the metering, so when you're finished, turn the metering off. But, yeah, it's a stunning-looking camera, actually. And, uh, yeah, beautiful. So there we are, folks. That's the camera for today. The, uh, the Nikon FM 1977 through to 82, I believe. And it was replaced by the FM2. Highly recommended. Good value for money, actually. They're quite expensive if you look at the prices of them there. They do keep their value pretty well. I say the lenses is the thing. Just be careful what lenses you're trying to use on what camera. As an aside to that, I take this off. You'll notice on this body that it's in focus. There's a little button here that you can push. And if you push it in, you can flick that AI coupling out of the way. So if I take a non AI lens, this is a 135 3.5 on a Nikon's finest, then that will attach. And as you can see, it's going to be stopped down metering because it's not attaching to the uh, the lens and the, and the camera body are not attached in any way. It doesn't rotate. So you can still use these pre AI lenses. I think this is a 135, isn't it? Yeah, 135, 3.5. Yeah, brilliant lens. So it does have that ability, it is backwards compatible. But it will be stop down metering rather than open aperture metering. Like I say, I have made previous films on the, um, the forerunner to this, the FT series. And I've also got some videos about compatibility with um, nickel mount lenses, nickel F mount lenses, whether they're pre AI, AI, and then it goes into AIS, uh, which is identified by the orange, the smallest aperture number is in orange. Um, so if you're interested in all that kind of stuff, have a look through the channel listing, you'll see that there's a, a load of videos about Nikon compatibility. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, questions, queries, all that usual good stuff. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.